Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another exciting episode of the podcast, Jailbreak Africa. This is the podcast where we are trying to liberate African minds for entrepreneurial success. And as always, I'm joined by Jerry Monyazung, the chartered oh. vendor. Comrade, how are you? I'm okay, comrade. How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not so well. <laughs> Why? I'm not so We are in January. Uh, January disease. Uh, last time I heard, you know, that uh, we're colonized by the whites. So the whites used to say, January is not easy. All right. Then our forefathers had, as if it's being said, January disease. <laughs> Says January is not easy. Okay, January is not easy. Exactly. Just like where we come from in Watomba. Yeah. Yeah. It's not Watomba. Yeah. It was Watson Bar. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then our Then the guys just said, no, I think it's Watomba. <laughs> I also had the classical one about uh, Gonyet. Exactly. So it was the, the white guys were asking, is the track Gonyet? Yeah. And we picked up Gonyet. Gonyet. And then it became Gonyet since, yeah. since then. And you know where Old Dumtara is? There's clo- close by, it's called Pafrix. Yeah, Pafrix, yeah, I, I it's, remember it's, the place. It's Felix. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> that one I didn't know. That one I didn't know. If you've got any other places that you know or any other items or things that we live by today that we probably borrowed from those times, please do share them in the comment section. We'd be happy to read about them. So yeah, I was talking about my January being not easy, which I interpreted as January disease. Mm-hmm. So I figured um, right now if I check my pockets, I don't have a lot of money. <laughs> My spending is a bit controlled, and you know I've I've told the wife at home to say please eat, take it easy on the cooking oil please <laughs> let's let's just make it until <laughs> the end of the month and then you go back to your to your old ways so that means no more fate cooks no more French fries or any of those things that require that consume a lot of uh, cooking oil exactly so I figured my, myself that if I'm cutting back on certain items because we're in January. That means I'm a, I'm a client somewhere. I'm a service provider. I'm a client somewhere. So for someone who was expecting to sell me cooking oil, I'm not going to buy. Exactly. Because I don't have the money. <laughs> so now let's talk about sales in regards to January being not easy or January diseases, they call it. Mm-hmm. How do you navigate selling in January? Mm, to me, what I, what I know is uh, there's what is called a 90-day phenomenon. Uh, it's, it's like... Uh, when you don't work hard today, mm-hmm. it will affect you in March. So, for me, uh, I think for the last past, uh, past five years, I prepare for January in November or in October. Okay. So, it means in October and November, I'm supposed to be prospecting a lot, looking for potential clients. And uh, I should be looking for a lot of clients, a lot of customers, so that probably if I'm looking, if I'm, if I'm supposed to be closing five deals, it simply means if my ratio of closing one, one deal, my ratio is 20%, I'm supposed to be looking for more customers, even thousands of them, for me to close a lot of deals. Because it doesn't mean that in January people they don't do business. They do business. Mm-hmm. But it's because the effort is to be more. It's like when you are in an environment like Zimbabwe, whereby the middle income is, doesn't even exist. Because I believe in Zimbabwe, it's either you have or you don't have. Okay. Most of the times. So it's uh, when you've got the upper class and the lower class only, it simply means that that economy has got a lot of struggle. And it also means that it, you're supposed to put more effort. Mm-hmm. That's why you always see me advocating for people to work during weekends, people to work during holidays, people to put more hours at work. Because okay. if you're in a normal economy, yes, you can work in eight hours and get whatever you want. But in an economy like ours, I'm actually surprised that we close on Sunday. We close on Saturdays. There are companies which can actually work from Monday to Friday only. Then they're satisfied. Or they're even complaining of January, but they're only working, they're only from, working during the week. From, from what? Monday, Monday to Friday. Friday. And they only work from 8 to 4.30. Then they will complain again that January is not easy. I don't think those people are being honest. So how I prepare for it, mm. when I'm getting into a tougher match, I'm supposed to, my preparation is supposed to be done. Uh, I'm supposed it to be working. resemble the challenge. Exactly. Yes. But you want to, 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 to prepare a uh, mediocre preparation for a challenge which is bigger. So it doesn't work that way. So to me, January is just like another month, even a better month. 
because everyone will be crying mm. as most of the people are crying you know it's the psychology like even during covid-19 mm. that's when we actually grew as a company why was most of the people they retreated but you continue you continue pushing because i'd rather die i'd rather put my last cent <laughs> you yeah? said you'd rather die i'd rather die trying <laughs> yeah than oh. quitting or retreating yeah so yeah, to me it's yeah. so always offensive i'm also always pushing in the market making sure that like right now all the sales people are supposed to be out there looking for that small dollar that uh, few dollars which are in the market that's what they're doing well you you highlighted the key dynamic of the Zimbabwean economy uh, that uh, the middle the middle income people they are almost not in existence it's usually the upper top and the the lower either you have or you don't, don't have. have so as a result um from a business perspective you are on the offensive side you're attacking mm-hmm. making sure that you get the sales mm-hmm. trickling in and making sure that january is like any other month but then for the majority of the people they are in defensive mode like i just told you we're cutting back on buying cooking oil you know we are in defense mode because we're trying to protect the little that we have we just believe that uh, i cannot be spending money or investing any money in january because who is going to buy from me mm. unless if you're probably selling the essentials which brings me to a converse my mzukur from south africa mm. you know when 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 he came through he asked me Seguru, you are always crying in Zimbabwe. Everyone in Zimbabwe is crying. But when I look at the cell phones that people in Zimbabwe use, they are expensive. Where do you get the money? Then I, I, I told him. That's when I realized the, the whole phenomenon that we, 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 we have the upper class and the lower class, the in-between us, they're almost non-existent. So I explained to him that um, people, the people who are working, they've got money. But the money that they have is not enough to buy a property like you'd expect. It's not enough to buy a car like you'd expect. So the only way to satisfy their hard work is for themselves to get a very nice phone. That's the only thing that would make sense for them. So back to our conversation. Mm. Uh, There are people we have currently, and the jobs that they're employed at, they get a, a salary that is somewhat basic, you know, minimal to an extent. But then the things that they achieve from saving, they save a lot of money and then they do whatever they do. What's your take on saving and investing? <laughs> uh, first, I would like to beg to differ in terms of uh, Zimbabweans yeah. buying phones because that's what is going to satisfy them uh-huh. because they don't have. Uh-huh. And the truth me. is, yeah. Zimbabweans, they like showing off. <laughs> <laughs> so if you notice right now, uh-huh. Probably a city with uh, most of the Mercedes Benz mm-hmm. in, in in Southern Africa, it might be Harare. Uh, if it's not Harare, okay. iPhones, uh-huh. Harare. Uh, whatever GD6, Harare. Because it's it's all about. I, I I've been in Lusaka, I've been in Jobek, I've been in a lot of cities, Gaborone. I tell you, the GD6 which you can find in Harare are plenty than those which you can find in Lusaka. Okay. But I'm saying Lusaka is a much stable economy than Harare. Harare yeah. But because as Zimbabweans, we are fond of gadgets. We like cars. Mm-hmm. A car is a sign of success. A good phone is also a sign of su- success. At one point, I used to have a PA who was using an iPhone 13 when it was just released. Mm. But I was not even using an iPhone by then. <laughs> At one point at the PA, Oster was using iPhone 12. She was already using iPhone 14. But wow. she would go with that iPhone 14 combis. Because why? It's a sign of status. When I was also asking a friend, she actually said no. She actually borrowed that phone. So she's paying in installments. Because why? She wants <laughs> to maintain a certain status. But then it doesn't make sense now that you've got a very expensive phone, but you are going to board a combi. Does it make sense? That's a mindset of us. Most of us Zimbabweans, we like showing off. We like oh. pretending that as we if are. we are rich, but we're not. I think I came across a very interesting quote that uh, I don't remember the author of that quote, but it was saying uh, people spend money that they don't have to impress uh, people that they don't even like with things that they don't own or something like that. Exactly. It, that's, that, that's what I believe, strongly believe with Zimbabweans. Because when you start getting into other cities, you start getting a different mindset. 
Okay. I've interacted and I've also stayed in Zambia. Mm-hmm. You notice how these guys behave. Someone may be a millionaire, but you cannot even see it. Wow. You cannot, you cannot even see the car they're driving is the Corolla. Look at the foreigners who are getting into Zimbabwe. Mm-hmm. You look at the Chinese. Mm-hmm. You look at the Indians. An Indian will be driving a Corolla, but I tell you, you'll be owning half of Kagui. Yeah, that's very true. Hmm? That's very true. A, a, a Jewish should be owning a lot of things in Zimbabwe, but he'll be driving in Nissan Sunny. Eh? So, Chinese. Mm. Huh? They don't even tr- dress in fancy clothes. Yeah, especially the Chinese. You never see them in Vic Falls hmm? for a holiday. You never see them in Nyanga for a holiday, but they're bagged up. Why is their culture? So in terms of spending, mm. we're just good spenders. Zimbabwe. You're good at spending. You're good so, at spending what we don't have. Wow. Exactly. So, so you mm. see someone driving an expensive car, mm. but it's it's just what they have between them and actually poverty. And poverty. So but in our, terms our of poverty, investment, our uh, investment, saving, like what you're also asking. Yeah. I, investing, I would rather have my money in investments, whereby mm. I know that if I've got certain money, it's also generating money. Rather just probably just saving money for the sake of it. And when you save money for the rain day, surely to come. And do, do you know, and you know if you ever notice that <laughs> our mothers and fathers, they would say, okay, uh, like my father was a civil servant, he was a soldier. So you'd hear him that, no, I'm saving this at $200 for an emergency. After mm. two days, you receive a message. There's a funeral. Mm. Mm. Because you've saved that money you are, for what? You are prepared for you the funeral. Prepared for That's the funeral. why it's coming If you are prepared for problems, problems will come. But if you say this money, I want to invest in this money to generate more interest, mm. that man will also hear what you're actually saying. So it's like a prayer. Mm. Very interesting. Very interesting. So uh, what does it say in terms of pre- being prepared? Because I know for businesses, businesses have got budgets. Every business ought to have a budget if it's supposed if it's going to survive. Yeah. So part of those budgets, there are cushions where you say when things get to the worst, this is the money, the reserve money in the coffers where we only use when things are um, are not okay. So does the same principle um, apply to businesses when we save money as a business to say we are saving for those dry periods where things might not be okay? Uh, are we saying as a business do we wish those uh, particular pages in business upon ourselves where things are not okay because we've got the money saved up. <laughs> That's what actually reminds me of what I said to my MD mm. uh, the last time when I had a meeting with him when we were appointing him. I actually say to a consultant's firm. Say so consultant's firm does it's not like a manufacturing company where they are consumables. Mm. We we are not doing retailing. So it simply means that whatever we are having in the month, if we're getting salaries, we're supposed to be getting salaries of that month. So if it means if you're putting 100% effort, if you're putting our all, we're supposed to be paid using the money which you've got from that month. Particular month. Not from last month. Mm. Not what you have saved from last month. Mm. So what I say to him was simple. Get your salaries, get whatever you want to run in the company, whatever is left is for the shareholders. Done. So when you're getting into the next month, you're getting, in, in, you're getting into that month, it's zero. So it means you're going to work more hard because you know that you're starting from zero. Someone who's saying, I've got salaries already for the next three months, mm. they'll never put the, the more effort because they know that they have. They'll put effort when the salary the starts sala- running when, when, out. The when, savings when account the savings is running dry. Exactly. Wow, that's, that's powerful. That's very interesting. So to me, I would rather stay at zero always. So that you put in the work. Because way. when I'm comfortable, I know that I'm, I'm comfortable. I know that I have already... A, a twenty, a fifty thousand stacked somewhere. Mm. So I know that ah, even if something comes, I mm. can even pay salaries. <laughs> I can even if someone <laughs> is sick, I can pay for that. Uh, so it's a disaster. Yeah, 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 yeah. Makes a lot of sense. And then um, there's another thing that that struck me by by surprise. Um, I went to the bank. I wanted to open a bank account for one of my other ventures that I have. I wanted to open a separate bank account for it. The process has been has been hectic. It's like oh, you're, you're trying to open to, to, <sighs> to it's, I, I think uh, opening a bank account in, in Zimbabwe, some of the banks, I is, don't is, understand. It's difficult than uh, getting a gun license. I know. I don't understand. <laughs> okay, so I, I've got issues with the requirements 
for banks, the KYC. I understand the process, the due diligence, absolutely fine, right? But the, the proof of residence thing, what's to do with that? I mean, who owns properties in Zimbabwe? Like, the, the, general, the average person... Most of the people, they don't have properties. They, we, 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 are, we are renting, so it most of means us. So that you're putting a restriction to move to... to Exactly. To, to probably 90% of the population. And why does it even matter? Why don't we ask for proof of raise for those who want to borrow loans? Perhaps. No, someone wants to open a bank account. To open a bank account, why? Why? It's crazy. So, I remember you were having a conversation with uh, Tamuka. Exactly. We talked about that. The over, um, the over um, you said the over regulation of exactly, Africa exactly. is what is creating an impediment to, to entry for certain markets. And corruption. Do you, do you know that it's easier? For a foreigner to come and mine our lithium than for a local to set up a lithium mi- mining company. Okay, tell me more. So I was <laughs> looking at um, the, the investment portfolios that have been set aside for 2024. And most of them, they are um, foreigner friendly. I don't know if it's a move to try and stimulate foreign direct investment. But it's at the expense of us locals. If I want to get a license to mine lithium, it's expensive. And it's, 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 it's almost impossible but then if a foreigner comes, they just look at their capital base and their capacity and what they intend to do. And then they're given that, that license. And guess what? According to the documentation, whatever other minerals they discover during the mining of lithium, it is none of our business. Say, for example, you're mining lithium, but maybe you just hit a gold sample. The gold belongs to them. Okay. The, what's regulated is going to be the lithium. Yes. I'm sure the same thing has also been happening with certain mines, our local mines, like, for example... Um, the guys at uh, Mimosa, mm-hmm. I, I would like to believe they mine for platinum, but then within their mining, they get a lot of deposits from silver, uh, your nickel, your gold, and whatnot. So they used to export it to South Africa in its all form. Uh-huh. So the guys from South Africa were processing the platinum for them in removing the platinum, and they would pocket the rest of the discoveries. So when these guys realized what was going on, they asked it, where have you been putting your gold? Like, no, our agreement says we process <laughs> platinum from your ore. Whatever we discover from you, oh, it's it has got nothing business, to do huh? with you. So I think they've since upgraded their infrastructure. Now they do the, the processing for platinum themselves. They no more send it to, to South Africa. But the point being, why do we shoot ourselves in the foot? Why are we creating these barriers to entry for the local people? But then for foreigners who've got no business with us, they're only here for, to make money. We make it so easy for them. Why? I think I think I think it's it's, it's there. Uh, I I think it's a, this is the problem of Africa. That's what we are saying. Jailbreak Africa. Mm-hmm. Why do I say so? It's because um, if you notice, uh, we value. We talk always when you when you see. I think I've heard a lot of uh, in forums where people are talking of foreign direct investments, mm-hmm. but hardly I've heard people recognizing the local investors. Yeah, very true. And th- these are the people who have actually helped this economy. These are the people, when they get money, they also spend the money in this economy. Mm. You know that most of the foreigners are not spending any cent in Zimbabwe. They don't. They actually export hard cash. Yeah. If you look at my Chinese friends, sometimes they can even import cooking oil. They can import everything. Soaps, toothpaste, everything. What they're just coming to do in Zimbabwe is work. Mm -hmm. And they don't also, I talked about tourism, they don't visit any tourism, any tourist, tourism site. Yeah, so what are, what are we saying about the locals? I think we should have a change of mindset whereby we should value African investors and especially the local investors. Mm-hmm. They must be put, this must, they, are, they must be a priority mm-hmm. because these are the people who are employing people. So we need to, yes, we need foreign direct investment, mm-hmm. but we need to also start recognizing the local investors. The local That's investors. what I think. That's very true. And uh, it's also said to note some of the, the, the most innovative ideas and noble ideas that have come from a social construct, they were actually birthed from the reason that the big institutions are creating barriers to entry by our very own local investors. I'll give you a perfect example. The Mukando. Mm-hmm. Mukando was born after a certain group of people had business ideas that they wanted funding for, but the banks were not ready and willing to give them money because based on their risk profile, as they call it, they were too risky to be lended money to. So what these guys did is, it was going to be you, me, and a couple of other guys. We want to start a business. So we'll say, with the $100 that we have, we cannot do anything. 
let's empower Jerry and put the money together the 10 of us so that we we, we give him 1000 US dollars so when we give him a thousand bucks he's going to have more capacity and hence more productivity so Jerry will turn over the the thousand bucks and make more money the next month we're giving the next person more money so it was a group of people who had business ideas that needed funding but couldn't get the funding from the banks which begs the question now if i went to a bank say if uh, let me put you in that scenario if you went to the bank and they couldn't give you a loan because you are you are risky in a sense mm. then you put together your friends and then we give you money then you start a business then the government comes and tells you to pay tax would you pay tax that's very, that's that, that's 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 difficult for me to pay tax i i think that's the reason why we have been losing a lot of taxes because people cannot because tax means you are you are paying homage exactly to a system that denied you entry into a certain business exactly. so why should i pay why tax should I pay taxes that's true because you, you see there are a lot of barriers to entry mm-hmm. especially in our, our economy and uh but if, but i think it's a bit opposite when you look at uh you're co- i'm comparing probably zimbabwe and zambia mm-hmm. if you notice zimbabwe do you know that y- you you need you need more than i think it's about five thousand dollars for you to get an investor's license when you're a foreigner. In Zambia? In Zimbabwe. Okay. Yeah. 5,000. Is it the license? How much is it? Yeah, it's, Have you ever uh, checked? it's 5K. Yeah. 5K. So it simply means that for a foreigner to get into Zimbabwe, they need more than almost 10,000 before they start anything. Let's talk about the paperwork. And to, ma- and to make it worse right now, the banks have also said, we're never going to open an account for a foreigner. Or for a local, yeah, a local person, they didn't find your own investor who is coming into Zimbabwe. Uh-huh. It simply means that automatically you now only require it. Why? But I, I'm a local. Barriers, that's why you see that most of the people, when people they want to invest into Zimbabwe, uh-huh. they'll dump Zimbabwe, and then that investment will get into Zambia. Wow. I, 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 I yes, because that's where we are. That's the sector which we are in. So someone will say, "Why should I give you ten thousand before I do anything?" Because remember, when we even got into Zambia doing mm. our business, mm. we we're not sure. We, we, we're not settled to say, no, we're going to do business in Zambia. So you're, you're testing waters. Mm. So if you bring probably, you want to bring money which you are ready to lose. And say probably, I want to bring this much and I'm ready to lose that. If it doesn't work, I can try another country. Mm. But imagine uh, you're an investor. You want to try with 10,000. Only for registration. Mm. Yeah, we're not. There's no office. There's, there's no nothing. setting up of, for any factory. Uh-huh. There's no importing of any equipment. This is only for you to get the paperwork done. Just for you to be legally here. Exactly. Ten thousand. So I, I also want to say to the government, this is also um, making investors afraid of getting into Zimbabwe. Yeah, because I think the model would work best if we allow investors to come in. They set up their infrastructure and everything. And then we get that money as kickbacks in, in, in tax. Probably maybe we can say when investor comes, they, they just do the normal process at normal fees like a citizen for mm. Zimbabwe. But then when they start paying tax, they start by paying maybe a higher tax or something like that so that they recoup the money that they so want up front. Because mm. it doesn't make sense for me. Maybe sometimes I'm just coming here to see if I can set up a business in Zimbabwe. Uh-huh. Maybe I just want to try out a certain business before I can invest wholly in Zimbabwe mm. and I already need to pump out 10K. Exactly. Let me tell you like a model which is in Zambia. In okay. Zambia, you can own a business. Because mm. sometimes I want to just register a business in Zambia, in Zimbabwe. Mm. But it doesn't mean that I want to run that business. So I don't, I don't require work permits. I don't require immigration. So it simply means what I just want is for me to have control Mm. in the company which i own only you get what i mean yeah so but right now when i'm just a shareholder in that company these guys they want us they want me to get a license to to, to get a zida license mm-hmm. for me to get a zida license i'm supposed to follow for me to get a bank account let me for me to get a bank account mm. i'm required to have a zida license i'm also required to have a work permit mm-hmm. But I don't want a work permit. I don't want an investor's permit. Mm-hmm. What I just want is for me to have my shareholding. But I'm forced to have all these documents. Okay. But in Let's Zambia, you can just be a shareholder. 
uh-huh. without even a work permit, without an investor's permit, but you can go and open a bank account, obviously, with other Zambian directors. All right. I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to understand the regulator. Let's 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 reverse the process. Let's put ourselves in their shoes. Why would they require all of that from investors? Say this is you and me, we are the government. Why would we require five thousand from an investor who's coming from Australia? Let's let's think along those lines. Why? I, I, I don't want I don't want to quote I didn't want to quote Dr. Mangujka. Remember what he said. What did he say? He said we we are not getting foreign currents outside the country, so we we'll get it inside <laughs> inside. <the country. laughs> but you know, w- when you look at Zimbabwe, is very interesting. We we have man. Zimbabwe is good true, man. It's true. Zimbabwe. I I I believe in that. We and have I, and man. I, also, I also believe that the, the the government is is even lenient in terms of taxing people. Is it? I I, I strongly think that. I, well, personally, I, I feel like we've got the, 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 the highest taxation rate in, mm, in way. I, I, I don't think that. I, yes, the rates are, are high, but to be honest, um, the government is not tight. It's not okay, tough. Okay, the process is fair. It's not tough in terms of pushing people to pay taxes. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah, compliance, if, if check, yeah they don't check really. Check the regulator in South Africa. Ah, uh, South African, South South African revenue that. services. Yes, yes, yes. Those people are serious. Yeah. They're serious. They can even garnish I feel like our system has got a lot, a lot of loopholes. Okay. And most of the... I've said it on my Facebook that most of the people, what they're calling profit is actually taxes which they're not paying to the government. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So com- some companies are reporting if high VAT, profits. VAT, they are not paying to the, com- to the, to the government. It's what yeah, they're calling profit. You, you mentioned VAT. Yeah. Uh, the current um, tax structure... Says uh, VAT has been reduced to how much? They're saying you, when you are a, 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 a business, mm-hmm. when you're operating, when you're just making 25,000 in a year, you're supposed to be fat registered. Okay. Do, do you have a. It's six so much. Let's, let's, let's let's do the calculations. Okay, when cool. you're making 60 bucks a day, <laughs> you're supposed to be registered <laughs> for VAT. So, how many companies are not registered for VAT? Wow. That's why I'm saying wow. our government is so understanding. They, wow. If they are going to eat, I tell you, almost <laughs> everyone is going to be found wanting because they are not paying enough taxes. I think with that, we, it's we, almost we, 60 need, bucks, we huh? need to start teaching people about <laughs> tax evasion. <laughs> no, we don't want to teach them about tax evasion, but we rather to, to do what is called tax avoidance, which is legal. Which is legal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Avoidance, mm. avoidance. So one of the classical ways to avoid taxes that I've also picked out is I don't know if you if you know from the from the from the from the whole the cash flow the income statement. It seems as if the government allows you to pay interest to all the loans that you own that you owe, mm. and then before you pay them tax. Mm-hmm. So if you're gonna minimize on your tax, just get a loan. Yeah, or even get assets. But what I just want to say mm-hmm. is, uh, I I think yes, the government, especially in Zimbabwe, is so understanding in terms of taxes. Okay. If you get into countries like Zambia, South Africa, the, the authorities there, they are strict in terms of taxes as well. Why do I feel like you've been in tax trouble and you are forgiven? Huh? <laughs> Why no, I, I work with... The, what, what happens is part of our business, you remember, we've got an accounting firm. Mm-hmm. So it deals with a lot of tax issues. So I know what is happening in the tax, so in the, with the taxes in Zimbabwe. So what I'm saying is, yes, as much we feel like we're overtaxed through the 2%... Uh, uh, the, it's called the Professor Mturi Tech. Shout out yeah. to him. <laughs> it's called Mturi Tech. But well, anyway, uh, it's the two percent taxes. Mm-hmm. But what I f- strongly feel is, even if we tax the two percent, it's not enough. Remember, almost ninety percent of the money which is circulating in Zimbabwe, it's not even passing through the bank. Yeah, it's not. These are cash, cash transactions. transactions. Yeah. So it simply means that the two percent taxes are being avoided. Mm-hmm. Mm? So. But is the person who is avoiding the two percent tax paying the income tax? Mm. Are they paying the VAT? Are they paying the capital gains? People are, are, are selling themselves. They are selling shares in the companies. Are they paying capital gains? So let us be mm. fair. The government is also relaxing, trying to make probably companies grow. When they grow, we are taxed later after a certain growth. 
Mm-hmm. But if probably if government was going to eat on each and every company, mm. I tell you most of the companies will not survive. Very interesting. And also you you mentioned the the whole ordeal that people who are trading in cash they are seemingly avoiding the 2% tax because it's not taxed on cash mm-hmm. but your RTGS transactions, right? So not the, even the, on the, US, but when it passes through the what? The bank the banking system. Okay. But if we, we are trading you and me when you pay me in cash, cash, then the two percent is non-existent. Is non-existent. Okay, so I was going to talk about a global trend. Uh, we other countries in the in the first world and the developed countries they've been working on a on a different breed in terms of uh, currency, which they're calling the CBDCs. I don't know if you've heard about them, the central bank digital currencies. So those ones are going to create in a cashless society. Cash is going to disappear all the way. So that means this My whole uh, <laughs> they're, they're trying to push the, the CBDC so that they adopt it globally. Uh, I don't know about the benefits of that. Obviously, one of them being the ability to monitor criminal activity. Because remember, criminals transact in cash. Mm. No paper trail. Even if you're going to loan the money, usually you do it in cash because you can't trace cash, right? So when the CBDCs come, Zimbabweans, are we going to be ready for them? Because remember, <laughs> even the Arab Z, the Arab Z, they've got a sandbox <laughs> program yeah. where they were experimenting with these central bank digital currencies. And they are so open to that. I remember, is it uh, Gua, Gua, Gua Matuno, Gua Matano? What's uh, his no, name? Mr. Mr. Uh, Dr. George Gua Matanga. Exactly. Gua Matanga. Permanent Secretary of exactly. Finance. Yeah, he was, he was mentioned. I remember there's an interview that I saw of him where he was criticizing cryptocurrencies but advocating for the central bank digital currencies. Yeah, but, but my question now is, we've got countries like America. Mm. America, they just print money, circulate it. They just mm. print trillions. I think you heard what happened with the Ukraine war. Mm. They just print billions. Yes. Send them into what? Ukraine. Ukraine. They're printing them from... Because you, for you to print money, you're supposed to have gold. Yeah. But is America... Uh, no. It's not applicable in America. Not even against so any fundamentals. Is, yeah. is also, is the America ready to do away with the hard currency, the US dollar? Well, I've, I've been reading the article in terms of uh, how America views the CBDCs. And apparently they seem to be pushing for it. The main reason why they're pushing for it is because they're trying to sideline the Bitcoin since it has more traction that side. And also... Uh, CBDCs, they spell a lot of control. Maybe let me, let me break it down for you how they work. Mm. So with the central bank digital currency, the government controls the currency in its totality, different from cash. So what then happens with the CBDCs, they can tell you how much to spend on what products and where to spend it on. Let me give you a working example. Because they can track that currency fluently. If uh, M&J is not tax compliant, the government can decide to say as a way of us punishing MNJ for not being tax compliant, no one is going to get services from MNJ. Mm-hmm. So what it means is if you go out and sell, yes, you sell, but when it comes to your clients paying you in CBDCs, their transactions will not go through. Not by virtue of the account, but the moment you point the CBDC to pay MNJ, because that transaction is bad by the government, they'll ban it. For example, if they say everyone should use electrical vehicles, if you want to buy fuel from any fuel station, the money will not go through because you're trying to buy from... And then if they suddenly say uh, fried foods, say fat fried foods are not healthy for people anymore. If you go to your favorite restaurants for some fried chicken, the money will not go through. Yeah, They'll they control. Not, they are not your... Exactly. So if, <laughs> if then they tell you that if you're staying in Harare, you're not supposed to buy commodities in Mutare. If you take your CBDC to Mutare, you can only buy other things except commodities. So America is very interested in controlling. That's what they're obsessed with, control. So they are pushing it big okay. time. They okay. really want it. I'm so afraid that when it comes this side... Will it work? Yeah, will it work? Do we have the right frameworks in place no, for the, us the to issues, adopt? The issues, uh, the truth is uh, we, 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 we've got a lot of challenges in our economy. Mm-hmm. And I think part of the challenges is we've got sanctions. Mm-hmm. We cannot deny them. I yeah, know that most true. of the people, they will say no. I'm not being political, but sanctions exist. They do exist. And you start uh, knowing that they really exist when you reach at a certain level, when you want to transact, True. especially globally. True. And also when you want to, I, I will tell you, for example, you wanted to get a license for Pastel. 
mm. no pastel yeah pastel yeah i know it the, pastel, the american owned the american owned the sage pastel yeah so what they said is no we're not, we're not going to give you a license because you're a zimbabwean company why because we're in the same category in terms of sanctions with afghanistan what? i'm telling you we're not, check we're, on their we're, website right we're now not a war zone. check on their website we are the only country which is there with sanctions on 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 pastel which doesn't have a, a war wow yeah but it's it's true yeah the the conversation about sanctions it's a it's a genuine one and like you're rightfully saying you deny the existence until you get to a certain level exactly i've got a friend who was also applying for a scholarship he was applying from south africa uh-huh. he's in south africa but uh-huh. he's zimbabwean uh-huh. so he went through the process and everything so when it came to him sending his passport that's when they realized that he's got a zimbabwean passport, passport. and, and they then they it. they cut him off from the program and said unfortunately we are unable to proceed with you as a candidate exactly. because you are coming from zimbabwe and currently zimbabwe is on our sanction list so we cannot work with so you so you only start appreciating that when sanctions they hit you and guess what we only got through we only got our pastel license through the zambian company smoothly no questions asked mm. no problems mm. so what i'm also saying is yes the problems are there in our country so sometimes for us to beat sanctions sometimes we have to use unorthodox ways true including using cash i don't blame whatever is happening currently because we've had problems in our country and sometimes we have to cut corners for us to survive even in our continent we've had a lot of problems mm. we've had a lot of disadvantages compared to any other continent in the world that's very true yeah so what about the brics Oh yeah, BRICS. I've been following that. <laughs> so it's an amalgamation. You're talking about money. Yeah, it's an amalgamation between uh BRICS. Do they have for, a now? Yeah, they do. The the I BRICS, heard that there's they, a country. They, is it Russia and uh Is it Russia and Iran? Maybe they were saying now they are now using they are now trading use their using their BRICS currents, not US dollar. Yeah, yeah. And I'm sure it's giving America Iran for their money because remember apart from the usd being named the greenback it's called the petrodollar because that's that has been the medium of exchange for all the the crude oil going on around the world and remember the, the from the men who built america the the likes of uh, the rockefellers yeah. and the rockefellers and everyone else they are the ones who owned the the whole oil industry and supply system around the globe so they are not happy they're not happy with brics and you remember russia is part of brics and russia has got one of the biggest oil reserves in the world and our own south africa is also part of it yeah talk of south africa uh-huh. south africa sending uh jailbreak africa south africa <laughs> sending <laughs> the mighty israel to IC- icc yeah what's your comment on that that was a bold move huh? that one was a bold move are we saying are we saying say, africa is slowly breaking the chains Yeah we are we uh, are absolutely and you know what i've been noticing how our leaders have been speaking out in certain irregularities irregularities that have been happening at the african union and the european union when they go to those meetings i remember it was the president of uh, uganda mm? who was telling you those guys Museveni. why do we have to go to europe to talk about african affairs in europe if you're so concerned about african affairs please come here come I down also, in africa I, we'll talk about it I here i also i also like uh, william ruto uh-huh. the president of kenya uh-huh. when he said we are called as african heads of states mm-hmm. for a usa africa summit mm-hmm. and the american president is not there is is not even there <laughs> and <laughs> the african presidents they are bundled in a bus uh uh-huh. eh? they are put in a bus <laughs> did you see the Uh, the funeral uh, yeah <laughs> when the african presidents were put in the buses they were put in the buses but the american president was allowed they, to they use came in their motor the their cadillacs and everything yeah uh, yeah so can you say probably the board move i'm not sub- saying so. we're not supporting any side mm-hmm. between israel and palestine mm-hmm. but i'm supporting our african brothers to say finally a voice is now coming from south africa mm-hmm. finally mm-hmm. we are now having an african country being mentioned on a global stage mm-hmm. in global affairs in global affairs yeah that's that's very true i'm also excited for the times that we're existing in because finally africa has woken up we are regarded as the sleeping giant but i don't think anymore 
my manje will be up and running <laughs> and taking the the trek because really look at the influential african leaders even kagame all the way from rwanda exactly they removed the he was asking about the um, the visa thing why do we, why do we, why need do we have visa visas to get into rwanda and he was talking about Rizzo's how you can Africa, you can exactly. cross across you can you can tra- travel across europe mm. using your 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 id card only if you belong to 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 a to european european country you can just use your id or your passport to go through all the other countries in, in even your ID card exactly so he, he he led by example by removing any visa requirements if you want For to travel any to African Rwanda. country yeah and zimbabwe and botswana i i don't think was it passed or they're still in in, in talking mm-hmm. they wanted to abolish the the passport the between passport between zimbabwe exactly yeah but i i, I still have some bit of reservations though <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know how you know I'm, how I'm, I'm I'm learning from <laughs> what we did to South Africa when South Africa opened its borders due to the World Cup in 2010. Uh, we had a, they had a huge influx of Zimbabweans who were skilled. Our artisans went there, electricians, technicians, plumbers. You know, they were trying to put the World Cup together and build stadiums. But is it bad? No, it's not bad. But then they sort of like started doing their Zimbabwean thing in another country. You know. We kukira masova by the way, and that—that's the best impression I can come up with. So I'm I'm now looking at Botswana. Won't we have a, a South Africa scenario in Botswana if you know it's just an ID? Yeah, they are risking. Yeah, uh, well, um, yeah, yeah. But 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 b- b- the question—it's it's a good question. I don't know. I don't know. Probably we'll leave it for our audience and our Yeah, friends, yeah. Please for do. Them to also comment and discuss these issues. Yeah, please but, do but, come but, through but, in the but, comment but section. But on 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 President Paul Kagame, did Africa African president reciprocate as well? Yes. In terms of abolishing visas, because imagine Some of them. every African leader is going to do that. Yeah, it'll what will happen to it'll, Africa? It will be a very powerful move, and I think it's the the step that step that we need towards the United States of Africa, the removal of uh, those barriers. Oh, those barriers. Yeah. When I want to get into, you know, so it, it, it's 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 almost uh, it's it's less than four hundred fifty kilometers for me to get into Lusaka. Mm-hmm. But I'm asked for a passport. Rigorous I, documentation. Rigorous documentation. Mm. You're even given days. Mm. Most of got brothers and sisters mm. who are related to it. In staying in Zambia. Staying in Zambia. Yeah. Staying in Botswana. Staying in Mozambique. I don't know. Probably in our next episode, they're going to Probably. do more on that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, this has been an exciting episode of Jailbreak Africa. Do connect with us on our social media platforms. You can follow us and uh, please do share this video, subscribe and turn on the notifications so that you don't miss out. And of course, we are offering sponsorship opportunities. If you'd like to sponsor this podcast, any segment of it, yeah, please do come through. Our contact information and details are going to be in the credits of this video as well as in the description. Otherwise, from me to you, peace out. See you next time.